San Francisco. And the San Francisco of my youth, which was in the 60s and the early 70s, was a place that smelled of pot and patchouli. What's pot? What's pot? <laughs> okay. it, was a, it was a place of uh, protest and promise, and, and the soundtrack of my city was really one filled with rock and roll music. It was uh, a time when we were advocating for the end of the Vietnam War. It was a time when my friends and my cohorts were working towards a better democracy, and we were really uh, interested in a more perfect union. Um, you know, this is the city of my youth, Budapest. And interestingly enough, I was listening to the same music as you were. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing. We, you wanted a better democracy. We wanted democracy, period. The only problem was Hungary was not free. Well, you know, we were fairly liberated in San Francisco, and in many ways it was one of the most liberal cities in the United States, and perhaps the world at the time. And, you know, we sort of had these superficial expressions of our liberal and liberated selves. We wore Levi's jeans. We went to a lot of rock concerts. Uh, I was fortunate enough to live pretty close to some of the best venues, the Fillmore. Uh, we weren't too far from the Cow Palace. Uh, and in, in my neighborhood, in fact, in, my, in the Bay Area, Country Joe's mom was even running and won local elections. It was a great time. And, in fact, down the street from me at Candlestick Park, the Beatles had their last concert. Well, I wish I could have been there. But you know what? No mother of a Hungarian rock musician ever ran for office. They couldn't. <laughs> but I just want to tell you that, you know, uh, I wore my Levi's as well. And I listened to, yeah, <laughs> and I listened to the Beatles as well. What we did is I took my Bakelite radio, went to the hills of Buda, and to have a better, to get a better reception of Voice of America radio for Europe. So when I was listening to that music, I was part of Los Ange the Los Angeles scene. I was part of San Francisco. I was in London. I was in Berlin, West Berlin. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Andres and I didn't know each other back then, but we actually shared something that I'm sure you two have experienced in this audience, which was a new language, a new vocabulary, an ability to understand each other across borders and across the many, many miles. We benefited from what was then two things, a cross-border medium and a cross-border message. The cross-border medium was very simple. It was really radio. That was the way that this message was being transferred in a very rudimentary but very successful way. The message, however, was rock. The liberation technology was the medium, and the message was rock. And you have to ask yourself, what was it about rock that was important? Well, rock is universal. It's personal. It spoke to me as a person. It touched my, my heart. And I agree with you, it was the border crossing technologies that made a difference. But the software was actually rock and roll music. Rock and roll music was really uh, something uh, that, that was unstoppable. It, 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 it cut through the Iron Curtain. It, it broke through uh, 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 the Berlin Wall. It was unstoppable, even if they tried hard. Well, you know, I know they tried hard because in the early 80s, I worked in, the, I worked in Sweden at Radio was, Sweden International. You were listening I, to me? Yeah, I was listening okay, to you. Okay, well, that's yeah. good. And we, the guy, he was the guy. Well, one of the problems we had was, of course, jamming. There was an attempt to stop this cross-border technology from, from uh, sending this message over these borders. And later on, when I was at NBC, I used to work in the Soviet Union, I found out about the power of broadcast and, in fact, the ultimate failure of jamming because of what you were doing up in the hills of Buddha. Uh, rock was born of freedom. It's a freedom of expression, the freedom of belief, the freedom of thought, the freedom of religion, the freedom of movement, and all of those things combined to create this freedom, which in essence is the bulwark of creativity and the bulwark of innovation. And as a result, and because of our generational experience, we felt that, you know, I, I practice hours on my air guitar, you know, and, and it was ultimately that we believed that the Stratocaster was more powerful than the Kalashnikov. Uh, I agree with that. I actually practiced on my real guitar. <laughs> but, you know, uh, perhaps you might think we were naive that, to think that rock and roll brought down uh, the Iron Curtain. But there is, there is truth to it. Uh, think of it this way. Hard power was needed. But soft power really made a difference in changing the mindset of people, of young people, a whole generation in Eastern uh, Central Europe. Um, Jimmy Page, when he played his fabulous riffs, he probably didn't know 
With each riff, he tore a little piece out of the Iron Curtain, and it was just fabulous. You know, you mentioned this thing called soft power, and this is something that Professor Nye of Harvard, uh, who's at the Kennedy School, has sort of made it his, his field of research. And we're expanding on it. Both Andras and I are working in this field, and we're working on this, in, in this uh, thing called spectral power, which we'll talk a bit more about. But it's essentially soft power is the power of ideas and the power of attraction, the ability to have something that is going to appeal to another group that is going to attract them to the values that you hold, the values that we well, hold soft in power? the West. Well, well, tell these guys what well, soft I, power is. Well, for example, rock and roll was soft power, in particular in our generation. But it, it extends beyond that. It's in our literature. It's a part of student exchanges. When you go to the United States, when Americans come here, um, Another example is uh, malaria. You know, the attempt to eradicate malaria in this world has an effect on people, the effect that is also felt today as you try to uh, end uh, AIDS around the world. So soft power, we find, is one of the best and most cost-effective, and that's an important point, most cost-effective when it is something that is not done by the state, but is rather done organically, it's based in values, and the reason we're talking about that here is because rock is an important part of that soft power. Uh, I, I agree. I think we should think of, of rock and roll as a metaphor. Uh, I wouldn't think that rock and roll would do the trick to change societies today. But think of it as a metaphor. And perhaps the idea is that each generation has to invent its own rock and roll. And I'm not going to impose rock my 60s and 70s rock and roll music on this generation, but they have to have the same mindset as you and I had, that this soft power is, a, 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 is an instrument that, that can really uh, change the, the world. You know, perhaps rock and roll music was the, was the first uh, social networking media. It, it, was, it was something that connected me to you. It, it connected me through, through the borders. Uh, and, and, and that's really the way I want you to think about rock and roll. And that's why we talk about the Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Google generation. Um, this is really uh, the effect that we're talking about is how do you get from each generation taking the rock of today and moving it, and moving it forward? I mean, it doesn't mean that Jimi Hendrix and, and the Beatles are passe. No, 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 no. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, unfortunately, he passed away, but he's not dead. But I think it's so important that we understand that today's generation has a totally different set of tools at its disposal. And, and, I, and, and that's the case. It's not just the case in our Western world. It's the case around the world. Well, I agree. There was lots of music present uh, during the events in North Africa uh, this, th this spring, uh, you should understand. Uh, but it wasn't Lady Gaga, or it wasn't the Rolling Stones that actually changed the mindset of people, but it was very much the new social media. It was Facebook, it was Twitter, it was Google, it was YouTube that helped these guys to be empowered. But the bottom line is that there had to be a content, uh, content to it. And, you know, we just have to make sure we understand that this process, we still have to feed it. That's right. And just the way that radio was really the technology and the medium, and if Facebook and Google and Twitter and all these other technologies are really just the medium, what's most important is the content. What is the message that's held within this? What is the message that's being transferred? Because rock was more than just a five-note hook and a really groovy melody that passed along this, this attraction. It was the message. It was the message of dissent and revolution at the time. And, it, and today, the tools of, of empowerment, what rock was then or what razors and smartphones are today, they carry the message, the, and, they, and by doing so, they empower individuals, and empowered individuals invariably work for change. Mostly positive, not always. Okay, let's get back to this whole power structure thing. Uh, during the Cold War, it was fairly simple. We had the Bakelite radio, and we had intercontinental ballistic missiles. It was fairly simple. It was black and white. You know, then the world was black and white. Uh, liberation technologies were basic, they were unidirectional, and they were hierarchical. Only states could really own these things, whether they were ICBMs or radios, and they were the only ones who could deploy them. Let's move to today. Today, the world is much more complex, as you've heard from most of our speakers, and it's a much more colorful world. 
The liberation technologies are affordable to everyone. You probably have some in your pockets today. They're everywhere, and they're interactive. They're not the way that they used to be, which were unidirectional. So in the past, you had this superpower standoff, the Cold War, black and white reality. That's not the case today. Okay, let's get back to this whole uh, complexity of, of, of what we call power. There's talk about hard power, which is nuclear weapons, which is hard weaponry, which is the battleships, and there's soft power, which is, just as you said, fight against malaria, uh, rock and roll music, uh, public diplomacy. We tend to think that it is time that we look at this in its complexity. It's hard power, it's soft power. In the end, it's just power. So we put this whole thing in a spectrum. So just imagine this. Add the colors to it. You have the red color in the spectrum, that's the extreme hard power. And then you have the purple color, which is the extreme soft power. And in between so many colors and so many shades of colors, to each color you can, you can attach a certain power tool, or rather, to each power tool, hard, less hard, hard soft, soft soft, you can add a certain color. What we are advocating is that we have to think this in its complexity in order to figure out when and how best to use the most appropriate tool in our power toolbox for the given situation. And so what you have is, over time, this black and white world that we talked about gets shoved through this prism of time, and out the other end you get this very colorful, complex spectrum. The colors and options represent the communications of today. They're rather flexible. They're responsive and they're universal in their reach. Uh, I think what you have to understand, we have to think about our economies. I mean, there is, we all know uh, democracies have an economic problem today. So therefore, we have to be smart in the way we use our toolbox in the most effective way. So we have to realize to be smarter on the use of our resources. Well, so if you look at this, uh, and, and it's very important that you mention this, because those hard resources, the ones that are within the color band are very expensive. They, are, they comprise themselves of three things for states. They are defense, they are development, and they are diplomacy. And we know what those things are because we see them. That's why we call them as a part of the visible part of our spectrum. What's most important today is what's outside of that visible spectrum, in the invisible part. And who resides in those invisible parts? It's all of us. This is what we call the civil society action, the civil society participation. It's the part that is not visible within the visible power spectrum. It's the NGOs, it's the doctors, yep. it's the rockers. Yeah, let's, 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 let's just give a little more explanation. You know, uh, we have to be sophisticated. Just imagine, Bruce Springsteen's playing a concert in Budapest in 1988 was an incredible, powerful tool to change the mindset of Hungarians. He toured Hungary with Amnesty International. I would place him in the green spectrum. But listen to this. Bruce Springsteen playing the same concert in Budapest next year, I hope he comes, would be in a softer spectrum because it would hardly change Hungarian society. We're a democracy. So hard power has to be followed up by soft power. It's just a reality. And this is, and this is a great example of Bruce Springsteen. And if you're out there, Bruce, please come next year. Uh, <laughs> it would be great to have you Bruce, in Budapest. Where are you, Bruce? <laughs> uh, it's, it's just important that you are able to combine all of these powers of the state and the powers outside of the state to create this full spectrum use of the power toolbox that you've talked about. Yeah. I, I, you know, I want to uh, make sure that we don't forget about civil society as one of the most powerful tools in our toolbox. Civil society, so if you're a rocker or if you're in civil society, you have to participate. But as we said before, while rock was very important in this very defined framework, today's rock is somewhere that resides within you and within our societies in general. But does that mean that rock's dead? No, rock's not dead. And listen to this, just one more idea. When we use our power, hard power tools these days, we used to, you know, look at it as a hammer. But today's hammer's got to be a smarter hammer so that we don't smash everything uh, uh, when we have to hit hard. We don't also hurt things that are so important. Like in Libya, we use hard power, but we didn't hurt the utilities, the hospitals, because we want to make sure that using hard power 
is using Power Smart. The hammer is an important tool. It will remain an important tool, but when you use it for everything, you tend to break things that you're not intended to break, with the exception of if you're the who. Well, you know, I just want to say, no, rock and roll is not dead, and, uh, and I, I wish, um, I want to thank uh, our rock and rollers, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, and does anyone have a guitar around here? Well, I was going to thank the Starship and Janice. I mean, I mean you, you, guys are, high you, you guys are a little stiff. Can, can you loosen up a little? Because I, I tend, I look at this place, I wish I could play a rock concert here because with this audience and this place. Uh, so, you know, anyone has a guitar? Okay, yeah. if you don't, does, does anyone have a guitar? What's oh, this? a guitar. Oh, right. my God. <laughs> wow. Wow, this is this is a I guess this is a Hungarian this is a Hungarian guitar and and I I I don't know what to say. I mean, where did you get that? It's uh Cowtown. Mootown. <laughs> Cowtown is beautiful. Dallas. Okay. Let's play it out, Andres. Wait, 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 oh. wait. Can you do some clapping? <laughs> louder, louder. Saving the world. Louder. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.